How's it going everybody? My name is Swanee and welcome back to another video. Guys, I just finished the last episode. Really weird ending. The whole, you know, whose memory is that and you have to save Mikasa and Armin is really throwing me off. Uh, it did give me a headache. I still have it. And yeah, it was a, it was a pretty heavy um, information episode. Funny, uh, funny how I can get so much information and still be so confused. If not, leave the episode with more confusion. But I'm going to run over my notes real quick and do a small recap before I jump into the next episode. I'm, I'm watching it back to back, so I haven't had any time to theorize. I don't even know what to theorize on because it's just so confusing. But anyway, Aaron's name is the Attack Titan. Kruger's first name is Aaron, which is interesting because Aaron is just a product child, basically. Like, you are the child of a product of, you know, the plan of the original Attack Titan. Because the Attack Titan is passing down the plan, you know, from person to person to Kruger, you know, for the cause to retake the founding and to beat Marley and, you know, I guess end their suppression. So Aaron is really just the product of all these plans being passed down, which is really interesting. On top of the fact that every time Grisha sees his child Aaron, he thinks of Aaron Kruger. Uh, really weird, really interesting dynamic. The next one being every intelligent Titan only has 13 years to live, which is the curse of Ymir. It sucks because Aaron only has a few years left and Armin has the full 13, but still though, to die so young, like 13, oh, they said, they said that that's how old Ymir was after her power awakened which is the curse. So Aaron is 15, 16, so he'll be 24, 25. Armin will be 30, um, 29, 30, which is so young. My next note being that if someone dies with the power, then it goes to an Eldian unborn baby. Next note is, is everything is connected by paths with blood and bones of a Titan. So memories and thoughts go through the paths and all paths pass through the coordinate, which is a point, which is the founding Titan. <laughs> this, is really, this is where it gets weird. All the memories and thoughts pass through the founding Titan or the coordinate. Um, that's just, that's, it's a weird thing I haven't even gotten into yet because I just watched the episode. But, so the next point is, is Shingeki no Kyojin, the attack titan. It's Eren's titan and is also the name of the show. Next one is the Valve Renouncing War. When a royal person takes the founding titan, they are immediately controlled by the will of the first king, which is to let titans suppress the people in the walls and, you know, everything that he believed. Um, so it has a name, it is the Valve Renouncing War. My next note being the Aaron and Dinah interaction. So that actually makes a whole lot of sense because when Historia touched Aaron's back, it triggered memories. So we knew that royalty touching Aaron's founding Titan could trigger something. When Aaron punched Dinah with the will to kill her, it activated all the Titans to basically rush her and devour her because she had royal blood. So he was able to use the Founding Titan's power because she had royal blood. My last note was Kruger, you have to save Mikasa and Armin, whose memories are these? My initial thought was somewhere on the voyage to Paradis, Kruger came into contact with her and he too got memories, but that wouldn't be possible because he doesn't have the Founding Titan yet and memories are like something from the past, right? When you remember a memory, it's something that's already happened. And Mikasa and Armin aren't even born yet. So I don't even, so I'm going to marinate on that and whip up some theories and hypotheticals, but that's basically all I got. And I'm so lost. So that's all I have for the recap. That's all I have for my notes. Um, I don't have a whole lot of thoughts on it just because not only did I just watch it, but everything about that episode was abstract. And I mean like paths crossing, like we saw that in a dream. We saw that in your mirror's dream, the whole memory thing of like, you know, who's Mikasa and Armin? and whose memory is this? Everything is so, I don't really know how to explain it, but I, I don't have any complete thoughts on it. So with all that being said, I'm excited to jump into the next episode. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Leave it to Pixis, just spit straight facts. Also, great point. Oh, 
Look at Aaron. Dude, he has just been plagued with memories. Wow. Everyone's learning the truth. What? I thought it was because... I remember them saying a couple episodes ago that there was a shit ton of fuel under Paradis. I thought the attack with the Colossal and Armored was all just to get Aaron. Right? Oh. I'm, I'm a little confused. Was that just a lie to explain, like, the holes? Oh. <laughs> Levi's right, though. Scout Regiment has done so much. Bro, why, the, why is the quality so bad? One second. Guys, I don't know why the quality just got worse out of nowhere, but... Hitch. Oh, yeah. Rest in peace, poor one out. That's, mm. That's nice of the crew to do that for Hitch. Oh, man. Yeah, he was thinking of her. Almost made me cry. Oh, she's getting a. Oh, my God. I don't know how I feel about that. I agree with them. Like, maybe <laughs> I'm such a I'm. J I think I think I think because I'm such a brutally honest person, I probably wouldn't. I mean, that just that almost went over my head when John confronted him just a second ago. I was like, you know, I didn't think Flock said anything wrong, but I can see how it could be a little insensitive. Considering how, you know, they were into each other and Flock was like, oh yeah, well, he probably regretted being there. But again, like, like on the realist level, I, I probably, I didn't see anything wrong with it because I probably would have said the same thing. It's just like that brutal honesty. But yeah, I mean, that is definitely insensitive. I think, I think I would have been a little more careful with my words, but I mean, I mean, but, it, but he's right. I mean, it is the truth. I mean, Marlo, Marlo did regret it a lot. He was like... Why am I here? Like, you know, Hitch is at home in bed and, like, you know, I could be with her. Ugh. Damn. I feel, I feel for Hitch. I, this is... It's just sad. Yeah, there's that brutal honesty. Oh, wow. Damn. That survivor's guilt probably hits Armin so bad. Mm. I don't know about irrational. There was definitely rationale involved in the decision. Mix <laughs> up. Yeah, again, I, Flock just, uh, that's why he rubs me the wrong way. It's just not the place or time, dude. Even if the message is true and, you know, honest and even though it's brutal, this is not the, it's not the right place.
Like I, like I get it. Like I understand. Yeah, I mean. Okay. Well, I disagree, Armin. Again, like I said, I lean, I'm leaning more towards Armin than Erwin, with all the factors. And Armin is just feeling survivor's guilt, which is why he's saying that. I think. And that's also true. Like, none of, nobody knows what the future holds. Oh, I love that it's Aaron, like, now inspiring Armin and having him remember, just like he did for Aaron and when he's in the Titan. Well, when he was unconscious. Uh... Wow, Aaron realized that like that freedom comes at a cost, which is what Grisha, which is why Grisha was like, you know, giving up. He's like, I didn't know this was going to take so much. Had I known freedom was going to be like this, I would never have done it. Wow, dude, the, the dialogue is hitting. I guess in that moment, Aaron kind of realized that like them saying them dreaming about the other side that that them dreaming of the sea and, you know, everything past it, like, is all good and all hopeful. When in actuality, it's still just as cruel. Guys, this narrative is, uh, something else. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh my god, those horns, bro, giving me chills. Oh my god, I got more chills. Dude, dude, those, not, those trumpets, man. Wow. So he actually, so Grisha? So Grisha was re- Damn. Yeah, Grisha was reasoning with him. And Freda's like, damn, I wish I, I could if I would. Dude, yeah, these memories, it's the same face. It's the same, you know, he's crying for Dinah, making the same face here. Bro, Aaron is going through it right now. Okay, so things are turning up. Hell yeah. Oh, <laughs> I was like, bro, why does Aaron look different? Forgot time passed. Oh. Armin gets to see the birds. I'm glad that he's, you know, enjoying. Wow. Oh, wow. Look at his hair. For now that Aaron has these memories, it's like...
Yeah, that's crazy. Judging from how the grass has grown behind it, how slow it's moving. Wow, there's the wall. Wow. <laughs> Look at Sasha. And Mika. Bro, Aaron. Well, then again, I guess, I guess Aaron's already seen it through the memories. Bro, Mika still looked so surprised. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Leave it to Levi. Nice. Oh. Oh, that, that's so cute. Oh, they finally made it. Yeah. All right, everybody. So we got a few notes, um, but first I want to touch on the end there. It was so cute seeing the entire crew, you know, play in the ocean, and it really kind of made me realize, like, you know, I take that, I take that for granted, and and all this time of you know seeing the sea, and Armin finally gets to do it, and I'm not gonna lie, it almost had me, almost started bawling my eyes out, but. I kept it together, um, I did get a little emotional there for a sec, but it's just because everything from the day he died, really got burned to death, everything from that point on is now extra, and I'm just, I'm just hoping that survivor's guilt is gone, and he can enjoy, you know, all of this extra, Armin got his second chance and he gets to see everything now, and it was so cute, and, and Mikasa's grin, oh my god, I know we saw her smile at the season 2 finale, but like, this was, I don't know, I don't really know how to explain it, you guys already know because you guys have already watched it, but it was really cute, I don't, I don't think I wrote anything, yeah, I didn't write anything, but there are a couple notes, yeah, Flock being brutally honest, like, I get it, I don't think that was the right place or the right time, but also at the same time, I'm a huge believer in, like, now is the time, right, so, like, every, everything, like, that's a very important message, and, you know, when when better than when everyone is together, and, you know, we're at a funeral for the ones who have fallen, and it, like, it's, it's, it's tough, man, it's tough, because in a way, that is the right place and right time, but for our side, or, like, our team, like, our inner circle, that isn't, it's insensitive to them, but in the grand scheme of things, that is the right place and the right time, um, yeah, I mean, I understand, like, I get it. I feel for Aaron to be plagued by those memories and to have your entire life's dream crushed, like, you know, hope is on the other side, freedom is on the other side of the sea, and then only to see in the memories that it's not. As a matter of fact, it's exponentially worse. It's 
the same cruelty and now you have enemies enemies with an insane military and insane technology so you know i kind of wish aaron could have just enjoyed the sea you know with his friends but but to see what grisha went through and what's truly there and to now know your mission when you guys have like a mission or you guys have a purpose like you're like it's the only thing that's in your head and in aaron's case how can you enjoy the sea how can you enjoy anything really when you know that that's on the other side and that's what you know that's how you're gonna get your freedom so i think aaron has been like i said plagued by the memories and plagued by that um knowledge of cruelty so again i don't i don't i can't blame him also for not celebrating the sea i just kind of i think from a outside fan perspective like i just wish i just wish he would have i wish you know it was a very beautiful moment everyone was enjoying it uh levi was really funny i thought that was good like what if it's you know what if it's poisonous like you know it's a mysterious liquid you know sea you know what if there's something in it which there is you know there's a lot of poisonous shit in the sea so i mean he's right to a degree but anyway back to my point but i kind of wish aaron would have just enjoyed the moment so in that flashback with grisha and ymir grisha tried reasoning um and Ymir almost like she scrunches her face as if like either she was either angry because he was there or she was angry because he was telling her what to do and she couldn't because of the vow of renouncing war. Because you can see her face like scrunch up and then like go back to being calm. Or it scrunched up because out of anger and she was like, yeah, like I, 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 I want to and need to destroy the Titans. And then it, it, it calmed out because of the vow of renouncing war and the will. Wow, that third one would be really if that if the third reason is why that's really cool because you get to see in real time her anger and like wanting to destroy the Titans and then immediately just having that erased and being calm because of the vow of renouncing war. Oh, that would be sick. I'm hoping that's it. You guys are gonna have to let me know. But yeah, with all that being said, I don't think I have anything else. So I have the full reaction on Patreon. I have a Discord. Both of those links will be in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. It'd be greatly appreciated. All right, hope y'all all have a good one.